G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear. You'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes. You'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture. You'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyse historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if Medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you, and you might want to consider subscribing. In this video, we're going to make a frame saw. This is a really good project to do with your kids, with your grandkids. Uh, for yourself, I'm making this essentially out of scrap wood, although... Spoiler alert, I'm going to make another one a little bit later in the year for my son or with my son uh, Which I'm really 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 looking forward to and These are fantastic pieces of kit. They don't cost a lot of money uh, Surprisingly, they're I would argue as effective if not more so than many of the hand saws you can buy commercially in some cases uh, You know 60 70 80 dollars um, and you can make these things for as little as sort of 20 25 dollars so really fantastic project to do totally recommend it for those of you who are into reenactment this is a fantastic place to start um, let's take a look so today we're going to make a frame saw frame saws have been around for at least 2000 years they go right back into the roman period and probably beyond we have um, unfortunately little evidence exactly when they go back to uh, all right, I just want to talk about a few things in terms of this particular saw and then we'll get on and make our own. Okay, so in terms of the actual parts of the saw, we have a saw blade, obviously. Uh, historically, these would have just been forged um, out of either iron and later in the medieval period, steel. These days, um, you, you get pressed steel ones and they're very cheap. However, um, I cannot find these in Australia for love or money. I've been to at least six different hardware stores and not been able to get a new blade. So we're going to have to make a blade and that's very easy and quite inexpensive. The next part we have is, um, we're going to call this the cross beam. For those of you who are interested, this particular saw is made out of Tasmanian oak. Uh, it's, I find it a really, really good piece of wood to work with and I'm going to have this saw for probably the rest of my life. I made this saw with my son just the other day. Alrighty, we have a, uh, a stick up here. This really is simply to hold tension on the string. Um, and the string obviously is actually quite an important part of the saw because that uh, holds everything in place. We then have the two uprights. Okay, you'll see both of these uprights are exactly the same. I've simply carved an extra section here in this one uh, because I'm right-handed and this uh, feature tells me in which direction the saw blade is facing. So it's just really easy to pick it up and know exactly where everything is and how it all works. Okay, for those of you who are interested, this particular beam is 50 millimeters wide, it's 19 millimeters deep, uh, and the length of the beam is dictated by the length of the saw. We'll talk more about that later. The stick is um, from memory, and it's about four, uh, 30 centimeters, sorry, 30 centimeters long, 300 millimeters, uh, roughly 12 inches. I don't work in imperial measurements, guys, I do apologize. Uh, I was brought up and raised on, on um, metric, so that's just what I'm used to using. These two vertical pieces are 65 millimeters wide, 19 millimeters deep, uh, and 400 millimeters long. This section from here to here is 17.5 centimeters or 175 millimeters. Okay, uh, I've simply rounded these edges off. Alrighty, so we have four lengths for the uprights that we've talked about. I'm just using some very basic household items for the marking process and for the benefit of the camera I'm going to use a sharpie pen uh, just to sort of highlight things a little bit all right so we want obviously everything to come out pretty much the same Uh, 
Uh, as I said, I will be using some power tools in this project uh, just for expediency and also um, from my, partly for my own benefit, unfortunately. Um, I am disabled due to an injury in my right shoulder. And I thought it would be easier just to um, Alright, so we have uh, those two. Now we're going to make the uh, the indents on one side. Measuring, as I said earlier, 17 and a half centimeters. Uh, so we're going to do a mortise and tenon joint for the beam. This is a very easy, simple project to do. You could do it quite easily with your kids. I made one of these with my son Matthew the other day. Um, not that difficult to do. Takes probably an hour or so. Right here, I'm just going to trim down the oak. Now you can use any wood really. Um, SPNF for the American and Canadian viewers is fine. Spruce, fir and pine, that's it. Uh, SPNF or um, some other types of pine would do. I tried radiata pine for this and it didn't work as well for me. Um, as I say, this is uh, oak. You could also try birch. In terms of a new blade for a, um, a frame saw, as I said, I, I can't get hold of a traditional blade anywhere. Um, so no one seems to do replacement blades as such. So the, uh, the solution to that problem that I came up with is just to make my own. And the cheapest way to do that is just to take apart a, uh, a wood saw like this. This is a, a, a standard joinery blade fairly inexpensive, cost me less than $10 and, uh, and seems to do the job. Now we're just going to cut out the handle in these two saws.
I think I might have just lost some of the footage of me chiseling out part of the mortise and tenon joint, which is a bit of a shame. But there we go. Um, I'm sure you get the idea. Uh, I like to have a nice, clean, smooth edge around these sorts of um, pieces of wood, so I'm going to use a router just to achieve that. Now what I'm going to do is just put a couple of holes in for the uh, to attach the saw blade. I've marked it um, four centimeters in and two and a half centimeters up. That just gives me a bit of flexibility with the type of saw blade that I'm going to use, and also it gives me um, a bit of extra bite to hold the blade in place. Righty, oh. Inserting the blade, just want to make sure there's no chafe in there, nothing that doesn't need to be, uh, and then I just put in a nut straight in behind it to hold it in place. This is obviously going to be my green wood saw. The distance there is 64 centimeters. I'm leaving a centimeter and a half on each side for the tenon. That means my total length is going to be 67 centimeters and this is where this type of saw specifically really comes into its own it is just excellent for this type of work So now we're just going to drop a small bolt through to hold the blade in place and I use a wing nut on the other side. Everything is now in place, the blade has been connected, the uh, beam has been mortised and tenoned into place. Now what we have to do, or all that we have to do, put this piece of string in place. Now as I said before, all this piece of string does really is hold tension. It doesn't actually really do a lot more, but... Um, and I'm just tying that off with a reef knot. There we go. I just use a simple linen string. It's actually very, very strong. And then we just use our stick. This is just simply a piece of off-cut oak and then that's going to increase the tension on the tenon joints and hold everything very firmly into place. You could put a small hole in here and then uh, locate a piece of dowel into the end of one of these and that could hold things more securely if you particularly wanted to. I don't see that as being necessary myself but you could if you wished. Alrighty, there we go. All 
Rightio, that is the joinery saw all finished. Perfect. Look at that, awesome. So exactly the same process. We've got everything put into place now perfectly. And we're just using this linen string. I use a very similar, not quite the same, linen string for my leather work. If you guys want to check out those videos, if you're into leather work or anything, Alrighty, and then just tie off with a reef knot or a flat knot as you might call it in America or Canada and then we just use that stick pivoting this around just to create the extra tension how awesome is that I'm really looking forward to giving this a burl alrighty guys these have come out amazing I am so so happy really truly excited I uh, cannot wait to get these in use it won't be very far away medieval mayhem is actually going to start a massive project in the next uh, few months we hope uh, now that's obviously going to depend on what happens with the virus so we don't know what that's going to be however we will be starting a, um, a medieval settlement project I seriously cannot wait to see what happens with this uh, we are in the well into the planning stages. We now need uh, things like planning approval. We need to finish off um, securing the land. We need to do a whole bunch of other things as well. And, uh, and all of that takes time and all of that takes money. So really and truly appreciate all of your support. Cannot tell you how much we appreciate your support. Uh, and hopefully as things progress into 2021, we will be uh, showcasing some amazing and very special projects that uh, we think anyway uh, are, are pretty pretty amazing so thank you so much for um, watching please like subscribe and share I'll catch you in my next video